Hi, my name is Antonis and I'm the painter of this video. Today I am painting the head of Venus inspired by the work of uh, the great Italian master Tiziano. And uh, I will share with you my thoughts uh, while painting this uh, study and uh, some tips uh, on uh, the process of uh, painting. So I hope you are uh, well and creative and uh, if this is something that uh, might interest you, stay with me uh, for this video. So the first thing I'm doing is uh, transferring uh, the drawing I have uh, priorly painted on a piece of paper. I'm transferring uh, this on uh, my uh, wood panel here. Uh, and uh, I'm doing this by smearing some uh, black powder paint on the back of my paper and using this as a transferring paper to transfer the drawing. Uh, after uh, before doing that, uh, as you see, I've painted my board with uh, a brown pinkish color, as you see here. And uh, although I am painting this study with uh, oils as my medium, um, I am uh, using this uh, pinkish uh, base color, I'm using acrylics uh, for this, just because they dry easily and very quickly. Now I'm using acrylics for this base color because my gesso is an acrylic uh, gesso. Um, if my gesso was a rabbit skin glue gesso, then I would have to use um, egg tempera uh, to, pra to, to paint this pink uh, base color. Anyway, this, um, this can get uh, a little bit confusing, so I will proceed by saying that after I've transferred the drawing, um, I will uh, draw very loosely the facial features with uh, a darker color. This uh, color can be a warm brownish uh, uh, reddish color as you see here. And uh, right after that, uh, as uh, you see at this point of the video, uh, you will see me painting the, um, the darker areas of uh, the head of Venus, the more cold, more uh, bluish, shadowy areas of her uh, head, um, as dictated, of course, by my reference uh, painting. And uh, here, uh, these are uh, the um, the area of uh, the upper uh, chest, uh, the jaw, and uh, the area under her uh, ear. Um, I'll try to observe uh, very much uh, uh, my reference and see that uh, uh, the master here, Tiziano, uh, uses these more, more cool, more cold uh, colors to describe the shadow and uh, also a little bit uh, darker in uh, value as well. They're not as bright, of course it's shadow, so he uses uh, darker colors and more bluish colors to um, um, to describe the shadowy parts on her uh, face. So I'm just preoccupied here, I will spend some time in uh, uh, painting these uh, areas of uh, darkness. Now, as you see, the pink uh, color that I've used, uh, this brown pink color that I've used as a base, uh, it's really helpful because uh, it's a mid-tone color, it's not very bright as white, uh, and uh, it helps me understand um, how dark uh, the color I'm painting or how, um, um, how bright the color I'm painting uh, is. So, as you see, this is my general uh, um, process and, uh, <laughs> I mean, if I had to describe the process with uh, a few sentences, I would say that uh, first apply a base color, then add your uh, shadows and then add your uh, lights. This is uh, really the the technique, uh, in my opinion, and uh, after that it's all uh, just a matter of uh, uh, practice and um, and being in the studio. But um, 
Okay, let's continue with uh, the description of this video. Here, um, of, as I said, I'm using, of course, uh, oils, uh, oil colors as my medium. And uh, here, uh, at the early stages of this process, I will just use uh, turpentine uh, oil, odorless, if you can, to, um, uh, to thin down my colors. Um, the color comes out from a tube, uh, it already, already has some linen oil in it and uh, now uh, on this first layer, let's say, of color, I will not add more linen color, it doesn't uh, need to be added, I will just thin the color with uh, turpentine color and um, I will uh, try, as you see here, to blend smooth and the, the colors that uh, I paint uh, with uh, my brushes. Now, I want to talk a little bit about uh, brushes in oil painting because uh, they are so, so important. Now, when we paint with um, egg tempera, let's say, or acrylics, things uh, I understand are a little bit more easy. For egg tempera, we need, uh, um, you know, a smooth, uh, a very soft uh, um, or a relatively soft brush, like the Kolinsky brush, um, a natural hair, and uh, uh, it's uh, easy to paint uh, with uh, this brush. We know what kind of brush to use. When it comes to oils, uh, the general idea is that we need uh, um, more uh, hard uh, uh, brushes, but uh, I believe that uh, sometimes we have to use also very um, more soft brushes and in general to use brushes that they um, we feel we can control them and we feel that they can obey in uh, our uh, des desires and what we need to paint. Um, sometimes I see paintings and I understand that uh, the painter uh, wasn't in control of uh, his uh, brush, didn't actually um, command, uh, didn't actually uh, give orders to his brush, instead the brush uh, would uh, behave <laughs> as if uh, it was on its own. Here in iconography, I mean in painting, <laughs> you know, um, for those of you who follow this channel, you know I am an iconographer as well. Uh, I like medieval and Byzantine painting a lot. Um, but uh, I, was, uh, I was saying that uh, in painting... Uh, um, the brush has to obey the the painter and um, and uh, paint as the painter would like. This is not very um, is not common often, and um, that's why I don't uh, like to give uh, um, to give orders. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to give uh, uh, any specific. Um, suggestions on uh, brushes when it comes to oil painting. Anyway, um, as you see here, I am uh, applying this um, light now, uh, this uh, light on the head, and uh, directly I will start to do a first blending by moving the colors around. I'll try to uh, blend this light with uh, the bluish shadow that I painted before. Now, if you ask me what colors I've used for uh, the shadow, I would... Uh, you know how I don't give any recipes, not because they are secrets, but because um, um, I don't really know the specific colors that uh, a master has used. I'll just try to imagine and... Uh, um, recreate the painting uh, by guessing, uh, mostly. Um, even if uh, I knew many of the, those colors don't exist, uh, the, many of the colors that uh, the master has used do not exist in, um, uh, in the market now. So, uh, if you ask me though what my 
um, colors might be for uh, the shadows I would tell you that uh, I've used um, some titanium white with a little bit of uh, cobalt blue, a little bit of uh, black and some uh, yellow ochre, something like that. And for the light I would tell you that uh, I've used uh, uh, titanium white with some ochre and some alizarin uh, red, something like that, to give us uh, the first uh, idea on light and uh, shadow. And uh, here you see me painting the eyes little by little. I'll try to use um, a, a bluish shadow on the white part of the eyes. And uh, with a very thin uh, brush I'll try to blend and create this illusion of brightness in the eyes. Now, uh, as you see, I'm applying a second layer of uh, light uh, just to make things more bright, uh, more powerful on, um, on the painting. Um, here, this is still uh, um, the first, my first sitting, so uh, the color is still uh, wet underneath. And um, I'll just apply this uh, color uh, without uh, at this point trying to blend it uh, uh, very thoroughly. I'll just apply it on, uh, the, on the first layer of painting. Now when we paint with uh, oils, the most common, uh, let's say, difficulty is that uh, uh, painters tend to to muddy their colors, to blend their colors in a way that creates um, a result that uh, looks uh, muddy, looks um, smeary, doesn't look very clean. And uh, the more, uh, the most easy way to avoid that is, you know, to wait for your first layers of color to dry a little bit. Uh, for some uh, a couple of days and then proceed with the second layer but then again you lose the ability of um, oil as a medium to blend easily so it's a matter of uh, understanding how the, the material behaves I have to say that uh, uh, even I do not feel very um, I don't feel I have conquered uh, at all this uh, medium. I feel that uh, it's a medium that uh, has uh, vast uh, possibilities and you can paint, uh, you can um, manipulate it uh, in so many ways uh, where you can get so many different uh, results. So somehow I um, regret not having spent uh, much of my student life exploring this medium. Instead I explored uh, egg tempera and acrylics. But um, anyway, it's never too late. So now that I'm uh, in my 40s, mid 40s, I uh, am ready to explore more oil as a medium. So as you see here, um, I attacked the first uh, layer of blending I did. Uh, this looks horrible of course right now, but uh, don't worry if your painting looks bad in uh, some uh, at some stages of the process. Um, now uh, I'm using this uh, soft, uh, relatively soft uh, brush um, and uh, I will try to blend this second uh, application of light uh, um, to blend it a little bit better uh, with the first uh, layer that is still uh, wet. Uh, now wh what you see me doing here is uh, I'm uh, blending and then I'm wiping my uh, brush on a piece of cloth and uh, this is something very important uh, to um, always, as I said before, have your brush obeying uh, your instructions. And um, what I find very useful is to have a piece of cloth or paper and uh, wipe my brush while I'm doing this uh, uh, blending. Uh, I want the brush to, to be without any color on it, just moving the color around. Um, Try to smear the color, I mean to blend uh, lights and shadows and create this illusion of a smooth transition 
uh, it's something difficult some people overdo it some people uh, um, get their color to be as i said uh, uh, dirty from the layers uh, uh, around the uh, from the layers beneath uh, them Anyway, try to use your uh, knowledge, try to use your um, sense and uh, blend uh, in a way that looks interesting and uh, uh, similar to the, um, to the reference that you are using. I'm using a paper palette and um, it's an easy way to make uh, uh, a lot of <laughs> mess, a big mess, but without, uh, you know, without having to clean a lot after that. Um, again, here you see me applying uh, uh, a more intense uh, white. Uh, I feel that uh, the blending I did before uh, darkened a little bit the skin. I wanted the skin to be a little bit more bright as uh, seen in my reference. So again I will, um, I will start um, by brightening the, the skin a little bit uh, more and then doing some uh, uh, blending again. I would say that uh, for me these studies, uh, you know, are not to um, to slavishly copy the the painting of Tiziano. Tiziano was uh, a master. I, I don't want to become Tiziano, um, and this shouldn't be our um, um, our goal when doing these studies. Um, I would also say that my study is not to really find his specific uh, technique. Um, uh, my goal is to see if uh, I can, uh, you know, reproduce a similar uh, result like um, the, the head I see on my reference with uh, my way, with a way that feels uh, that understandable, that um, makes sense to me and uh, that uh, I can um, uh, somehow master. I wasn't in the studio of uh, Tiziano when he painted uh, his uh, um, his work. I don't know what uh, uh, the actual technique is. It must have been something similar to this, uh, I'm pretty sure. Um, but um, again, it uh, doesn't really matter. I mean, even if we had uh, a video of uh, Tiziano and the other masters painting their paintings, um, even if we had a thorough video of uh, what they did, uh, still uh, for us it would be useful only if we worked in our studio, if we spent the time in our studio before our paintings and uh, uh, only if we practiced uh, ourselves uh, painting. So um, I don't expect um, to become a better uh, painter from knowing uh, techniques, many techniques. I just uh, want to to stay in my studio, to paint uh, more, see if I can uh, learn something uh, out of these uh, studies and uh, become a better uh, painter. Um, learning techniques or using the same uh, colors as they did is not something that uh, interests me and uh, would make me a better uh, painter. So my advice for you is just stay more in the studio, practice a little bit more and uh, of course uh, enjoy the process. Uh, don't uh, hesitate to paint, don't be intimidated by painting. Uh, it's okay if our painting uh, is not perfect really. Um, we just uh, practice uh, here, we just explore the materials. Um, we are exactly, sometimes I feel exactly that, I'm, I feel just like an explorer of uh, what uh, a medium can do, what my brush, my tools can do, and um, that's all. Having a good time, a creative time in the studio, and uh, that's all. So, 
take pleasure from the process and um, uh, take risks when you paint, try new things, try um, difficult and hard uh, themes or uh, ideas, but ideas that uh, might have previously uh, scared you, just see what you can do out of them. And um, I have to tell you that Painting gives me more pleasure um, when I uh, try these risky subjects, uh, this uh, try new things and paint uh, new things. So don't be afraid to uh, to try your abilities, to try your skills, and uh, see what can come out of that. Many of you send me your uh, artwork, and I have to say that. Uh, It really does feel amazing, it feels very very nice and uh, it's always uh, great to see your progress and uh, to see that uh, you do spend time in your studio. So thank you all for uh, being here. (laughs) If you are still here at this point of the video, then really thank you. I know how hard it can be uh, following um, me when I'm just uh, talking, talking, talking. Uh, uh, Of course, (laughs) we're talking without uh, um, a very comprehensible uh, accent. So you really are heroes. Thank you so much. Uh, You can support this channel if you like uh, on patreon.com. Sometimes I upload my full uh, process, my slow slow without comments uh, uh, videos there um, where they are not uh, sped up. And uh, you can see those on patreon.com slash painting the light. I want to thank my patrons for supporting this channel. It's really, really useful for me. And uh, I'm not sure if I would be able to continue doing the production of these videos without uh, your support. You know, life is running. Um, I have a full-time job uh, as an art teacher. And um, sometimes the production of these videos can be... Uh, a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit uh, difficult but uh, anyway i would like to thank all of you for being here for commenting uh, uh, so beautifully below i know that uh, i can't really um, sometimes i can't uh, well <laughs> almost always i cannot reply on the comments but uh, thank you so much for uh, Uh, writing. I read all of those and thank you so much. Here, as you see, I continue with moving the color around, manipulating the color around. Here, the the painting is very wet beneath, so if I want to apply more color, I will will have to apply also some uh, linen oil at this point. Uh, otherwise uh, the color will not be able to uh, nicely sit on the uh, wet layer that uh, is underneath. Uh, Just don't try to overdo it, just a few drops of uh, linen uh, oil, Um, otherwise uh, know that uh, the painting will become yellower uh, in some uh, years. So moving and uh, blending, moving and blending, this is the way to go from here on. Little by little this painting comes to, um, comes to, uh, to become more uh, as it should be. Again, some uh, um, lighting up. I try to compare here the shadows with the lights, do always corrections, corrections in the shapes, uh, corrections uh, in how bright a shadow should be. So, uh, if I approach this uh, 
study in a modest way, humble way, then it's going to be easier for me. And this is something that I invite you to do as well. When you paint, try to be in the spirit of a student. Um, try to see if you can learn something and uh, this will help you paint in a more uh, relaxed way let's say um, even if you do some mistake you know you are still learning you are a student you are not uh, this is not a commission um, that you have to perfectly paint so being that uh, spirit of student this is how I am um, this is how I try to, to be when I'm painting and uh, let the masters here at Tiziano guide you um, while thanking them for uh, giving us so much pleasure for our eyes and for teaching us uh, painters to be better, uh, better ones. So... <laughs> I don't only want to thank my patrons here and uh, my viewers, you, my subscribers, but of course uh, my teachers, these masters uh, who um, I admire and uh, they truly had something uh, divine uh, on them. Now I proceed with uh, lighting up a little bit the hair of uh, Venus and uh, uh, here I observed that the way um, Tiziano painted her haircut uh, really resembles uh, the haircut of uh, the angels on, of the Byzantine period, of the Byzantine painting. If you see an angel you'll uh, definitely see similarities with the haircut of Venus here, along with her uh, uh, three-fourths pose here. It's very, very similar. This head um, is very similar to uh, a head of uh, an angel in the Byzantine uh, uh, painting. So, of course, Tiziano uh, was well aware of the Byzantine uh, painting. Uh, he moved on, of course. And uh, here though you see some remnants, some echo of that Byzantine uh, painting on this head of uh, Venus. Um, do search for a head of angel and see the similarities, like the hair, the haircut of uh, this uh, uh, Venus really resembles uh, the haircut of an angel. Uh, here um, it's... Uh, my second sitting, now I've let the painting rest for a couple of days and now I proceed with adding a little bit more of light, a little bit more of edge on this painting, now that I'm not, not bothered by the underneath wet layers. So, it's important to thank our teachers, as I said, and um, it's important to keep our student uh, spirit and uh, learn. When I'm doing these studies, I just want to say this. Um, it's not uh, that uh, I consider these um, paintings, uh, these copies, let's say, to, to have any great artistic value. No, by themselves. Um, they are nice uh, studies, I have to say, but uh, their artistic value is not something, uh, something great. They're just uh, studies. But um, I'm doing those because uh, I can apply what I learned and be more confident uh, when I uh, apply that similar technique in a more personal, more modern uh, work of mine. Um, and also they are made out of curiosity and see how uh, how did the, the masters painted uh, uh, all this, how they could be so divine, so amazing. And the more we try to paint these paintings, the more I find myself to be uh, lacking the, this... Um, skill and this uh, genius that uh, these uh, masters uh, had. Anyway, um, 
I just want to to say that uh, uh, these studies are just to to keep me uh, busy in a way that is creative and uh, learning, and this is how we should uh, approach them. As you see, little by little. The face of Venus looks uh, nice, it looks uh, um, okay, passable, <laughs> and uh, I really would like to, um, to inspire you with this video to do some of these studies and uh, have some fun yourselves, uh, try to move uh, color around, <laughs> in the past we used to say to move our bodies, and some song there to, you know, move our bodies. But I would say move the color around here and uh, try to, uh, to play a little bit, try to have some fun in the studio with these studies without any stress of, uh, you know, the meaning of the painting and the conceptual uh, value of the work. No, just uh, try to see if you can... Um, reproduce uh, the, some of the work of uh, the masters and uh, learn something out of uh, that. Let me know if you have any questions below in the comments um, and feel free to answer some of uh, uh, the, the comments that you see there, some of the questions that you might see there, feel free to, to ask them. If you are an iconographer or if you are interested in iconography, um, I have a, um, a course on teachable.com. You might find uh, uh, this on uh, the description of the video. Um, and uh, I'm planning on making a course on painting as well, oil painting or acrylic painting. And, uh, but this will come at some point in the future. So, little by little, as you see, this uh, comes to an end and uh, it does look okay. It doesn't look, of course, uh, by far, it doesn't look as great as the original. And uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Tiziano's technique was very different. And uh, um, I'm pretty sure he used uh, a broader uh, brush, for example, or that uh, he was uh, uh, much more confident. But uh, anyway, this is my study. I have to say for, for the hair uh, here that I was so surprised to see that his technique was also was very expressionistic, I would say. He didn't uh, paint um, each individual hair with meticulously and stuff like that. He was very uh, loose in his brush stroke. He was very... Um, free in a way of painting and that was really really amazing and nice to see. I didn't paint her uh, earring though. She originally, Tiziano painted a beautiful earring that uh, I omitted but um, Anyway, this is uh, my study on uh, Tiziano. I hope this was not <laughs> too heavy on you. Uh, I tried to, to be clean, clear in transferring my thoughts to you. I know it wasn't hard. Please forgive my way of uh, expressing myself. I hope uh, you will be healthy and creative and uh, feel free to uh, communicate with me and send me your artwork uh, for my pleasure. Have uh, a beautiful and creative time in your studio. I will see you soon with uh, another studio on iconography or painting. Have a nice time. Bye.